Hi SQL folks, welcome to another tutorial from SQL Maestros. We have talked so much about the CX packet weight type. In fact, on sqlmaestros.com you have blogs, there are videos in the video lobby, you have CX packet part one, part two, and even if you're watching this one on the YouTube channel, you search on CX packet, you are going to get a lot of content. And uh, rightly so, because CX packet weight type generally shows up as one of the top weights in your analysis. And you want to understand what is going on and should you really worry about high weight time, high weight count related to CX packet. Now CX packet simply means that parallelism is happening and of course it will happen most of you are running SQL server on boxes with multiple processors so it's all it's good in most cases it is good that the query is running with multiple threads and it is running with parallel execution all great out there I was wondering why people are not asking questions about CX consumer yes I am mentioning CX consumer so this is another weight type related to parallelism called CX consumer. Not too many questions were coming about that until recently when people started using some of the recent versions of SQL Server like 2017, 19 and even 22. You will see CX consumer probably showing up as one of those top weights and then there are questions like oh now along with CX packet you also have CX consumer coming up so should you worry about that etc. And when I see some questions uh, around that I thought why not show this and explain CX consumer along with a demo. Now of course CX packet and CX consumer they are tightly coupled and they are tightly related. So here is the background. CX packet has been there for quite some time as a weight type. CX consumer as a weight type was introduced in SQL Server 2016 Service Pack 2 uh, alongside SQL Server 2017 RTM Cumulative Update 3. So the background to this is of course both of these weight types mean that parallel execution is happening that's the first thing. Now whether when you see high wait time for these whether you should worry or not worry is probably the content for another video but for this moment let's just understand what really CX consumer means and why does it and when does it show up. So the background to this is there are a couple of iterators in the execution plans for example the repartition scheme that have the producer threads and the consumer threads. The consumer threads wait for data from the producer threads. That's a very simple explanation here. Now typically in the absence of CX consumer, so let's assume that there is no CX consumer wait type. When producer threads are working and CX consumers are waiting for data from the producer threads, the consumer threads will also register for the CX packet wait type and their wait time is going to show up in CX packet. So what you can see here is that all these wait counts and this high wait time which gets added up in CX packet is actually meaningless. It doesn't make sense uh, and it's not actionable. So what Microsoft did was <clears throat> crafted another wait type here called CX consumer. So all of this so called non actionable wait time related to consumer threads will be registered under CX consumer wait type which means now CX packet wait time will go down and then in real sense CX packet wait time and wait counts will become more actionable because you're filtering out all the noise from this CX packet into CX consumer. This is the background and then the follow up question is that should you ignore all the wait time and all these weights uh, that are encountered with CX consumer? In most cases you can ignore but then keep an eye not everything should be ignored and the example that I'm showing you right now is related to spooling. So I'm going to show you index spooling, eager spooling here which uh, causes high wait time of course for CX packet as well as CX consumer and should not be ignored. But in this video I'm not going to explain the solution remedy etc to it. I will show you how CX consumer uh, 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 how the wait time increases for CX consumer when does it occur etc. So let's first see that part in action. Now 
I was lucky that I was able to um, kind of uh, pull up a VM, SQL Server 2016 VM from some old hard drive. I was working on SQL Server 2019 and 22, and I actually wanted to show this demo along with SQL Server 2016. So I have a version of SQL Server 2016 here. Mind you, CX Consumer was introduced in SQL Server 2016 SP2 onwards. So I have SQL Server 2016 RTM here and there is no CX Consumer wait type here. Okay, let's get started. We are using AdventureWorks 2016. I have a report here in this stored procedure called My Business Report. Let's turn on Actual Execution Plan. Let's turn this on and let's go and execute this. Now, while this is running, this is session ID 55, and I don't have zoom it here, uh, zoom in in this one. Sorry, again, old VM, I, didn't, I don't have the zoom in thing here. So let's, um, okay, this will work, but not the result set. So what I'm going to do is while this is running, let's take these diagnostic queries and move over to this window and execute this. So from sysdmos waiting tasks, you can see that of course, the query is running in parallel and you can see the output of waiting tasks that all of these parallel threads, they're waiting on CX packet. So what you can see, and sorry, I'm not able to zoom in, but you can see exec sync and you can see CX packet. Well, I have explained exec sync in, uh, in one of the uh, premium videos, which is available in the premium membership out there. So now you can see there is CX packet here and you can observe that there is no CX consumer. So even from wait stats, you can see CX packet here and CX row set, etc. And look at the waiting task count and high wait time for CX packet, pretty high number. So let's just, while this is running, let's go and execute this once more. And you can only see the numbers increasing. Let's just wait for the execution to complete. And we will also see the uh, execution plan of this query. And you will see that this is going to be a parallel execution and all of this wait, CX packet wait is being caused by the spool operator here. The spooling, it's all parallel parallelism happening out there. So I'm just waiting for this to complete. Let's just wait for a few more seconds. If this is going to take be <clears throat> beyond two minutes, I, what I will do is pause the video and come back again. Okay, this is beyond two minutes now. Let's wait for a few more seconds. Let's just quickly refresh this. So you can see for session ID 55 constantly, you can see the wait duration for CX packet constantly increasing. So there is a lot of noise going into CX packet. There is no CX consumers, which means the wait time for CX consumer threads, I mean, supposedly for CX consumer threads, for the consumer threads is also going into CX packet. Okay, a few more seconds of wait and this should be done. Okay, let me do something. Let me pause the video wait for this to complete and I'm going to come back again. So here I go with the pause. Good that I paused the video. So it took about four minutes, 20 seconds to complete. I was expecting this to complete in about two minutes. But anyway, now that the execution is completed, let's jump over to the execution plan. First things you will observe that yes, this is a parallel execution. And right on the screen, you can see that Index pooling here, the eager pooling activity here is quite expensive. 82% of the cost goes to that. Anyway, we are not jumping deeper into the execution plan. I will in fact do this in SQL Server 2019 when I take the same query and run it in SQL Server 2019. But now let's switch over to the other window and let's go and execute the wait stats DMV. So look at the numbers first. And you know, while I had paused the video, I checked that there is a magnifier tool here. So I'm going to use that. So you can see the wait, waiting task count 89 and the wait time in millisecond is 136199. This is for CX packet. This is SQL Server 2016. There is no CX consumer here. So let's uh, zoom out. Let's close, uh, let's close this. And now let's refresh. So when I refresh here, 
Of course, you can see nothing is waiting on 55 session ID because the execution is complete. And let's see the number again. Okay, CX packet, 92 waiting task count and look at the wait time in milliseconds, 396547. So here, in fact, I can tell you that none of this wait time probably is actionable. All, most of this wait time that you see in milliseconds here is actually the consumer threads waiting for data from the producer threads. And there's nothing much you can do about that. It's good that the CX consumer wait type gets added now in these uh, recent versions of SQL Server where all this noise gets filtered out. So now let's take the same workload, let's take the same query and run it in SQL Server 2019. It's not important that you have to note down these numbers and measure it up with SQL Server 2019. What's important there is to see that CX packet wait time is going to be relatively very low and you will see CX consumer wait time quite considerable. Okay, let's close this. I'm going to minimize this and take out this VM now. And of course, in this VM also, again, when we run the query, let's see what we have here. This is session ID 86. Right now, there's nothing running on 86. Let's take the diagnostic queries exactly like this, like what we had there. Okay, I'm going to put this up. Let's go and execute this. So what you can see, you can see some numbers there. So let's free the proc cache, uh, not for proc cache, pardon, uh, pardon me. We are going to clear off the wait stats using DBCC SQL perf statement. Let's do that. Okay, now let's go and execute. So what you're seeing is session ID 86. It's not running, so nothing is waiting. And for CX packet and CX consumer. So you can see this wait type now, CX consumer. Count is zero, wait time is um, uh, all zero. We have reset everything. Now let's go and execute our business report once again. Execution plan is turned on. Okay, this is running. You are going to see the same execution plan now. You will probably see the same cost structure. It's going to take more or less the same amount of time, etc. But then you are going to see quite a difference between the weight metrics, weight stats uh, between CX packet and CX consumer. Okay, so again, I am going to pause this and I'm going to come back when the execution is complete. Here I pause. Okay, I paused the video and then I realized that, oh, I should actually be running this right now to show you the real time waiting tasks, right? This DMV output. So let's go and execute this because I wanted to show this to you. Yes, you can now see here is all CX consumer. In fact, there is no CX packet wait type in the current waiting task output. Okay, let's just go and execute this once more. Could I remember that? Otherwise, I would have to run the query again. Okay, so what is the difference between this output and what you saw earlier? You were seeing exec sync, but now instead of CX packet, you are seeing CX consumer. And this is just to reiterate and reconfirm an evidence that, that the execution that you were seeing earlier in SQL Server 2016, all those weights were actually non-actionable weights. They were all related to the consumer threads. Now in SQL Server 2019, SQL Server 22, even SQL Server 2017, CU3 onwards, you are going to see all of those consumer threads registering and putting up their weight classes under CX consumer. So let's just go and execute this once more and you will see CX consumer. Once the query completes, then you are going to see these numbers getting populated. So we got to wait for some time. But I hope at till, until this point, you have got the message, you have understood what CX consumer here really means. This is a wonderful improvement because CX packet really uh, uh, shows up as one of those top weights almost all the time in any SQL Server environment, any SQL Server hardware with multiple processors. And now you can really take CX packet numbers and, and it is more actionable, right? Because all this noise gets filtered out into CX consumer. Let's go and look into the execution plan. Let's close this. How much more time? Okay. We got to wait for probably a minute more. Okay. So I'm going to pause and come back now.
this output was important which gives you the evidence that no weight on CX packet but again let's look at the final numbers before we close the video all right friends the execution is complete let's jump over to the execution plan and you have a parallel plan as expected and it is the same plan that you saw in sql server 2016 as well and the same cost structure with the spooling thing as one of the most expensive operations out here in the execution plan and this is really the culprit well i'm going to cover this in another video stay tuned as to how spooling is expensive and is there are, are there ways how you can get rid of it? In fact, in this particular case, it is a lot about indexes. So easier to explain this one. Anyway, let's jump over to the other window out there and let's go and refresh this. So just a quick summary again, you were seeing all the CX consumer stuff here and this number is going to get populated now. Let's go and execute this. Yes, you have nothing waiting on uh, 86 and yes, here is the real stuff. All of this was non-actionable weights. The weights related to the consumer threads, they all get populated in CX consumer. And CX packet is pretty good. Look at the wait time. Now look at this number compared with what you saw in SQL Server 2016 VM. Now, as uh, just to um, reiterate again, this number, when you see high numbers with CX consumer, as I said earlier, in most cases, you can safely ignore them, but not in all cases. There will be outliers where you might want to just go and have a look at those workloads that are causing high wait time for CX consumer. Spooling is another one out there. Okay, friends, uh, with this, we come to the conclusion of this video. Friends, take a look at the SQL Server Masterclass Recordings Performance Tuning, 40 hours of deep type content. And the recordings are now available for a lifetime, which means if you subscribe, you can watch the content anytime, anywhere, as many times as you want. And for those of you who are wondering, okay, what was this exec sync weight type? You saw CX packet, CX consumer and exec sync move over, switch over to the premium uh, video content, which is available on SQL Maestro's as part of premium membership. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can jump over to the member uh, only content, the member list, which is where I have put up a video on exec sync. With a, a very nominal fee, you can watch a lot of premium content from us. Hope you've enjoyed the video. See you soon. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the red SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.